Good morning. Well, welcome again to your Father's house, where we have gathered to be about our Father's business. For our order of service this morning, we'll use morning or matins on page 32. Our hymn will be Psalm 1b, which you picked up on the insert on the way in. And in place of the Te Deum, the We Praise You, O God, we'll have an anthem by our choir. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we ended our chapel devotion yesterday, we did so with reference to the narrow road unto which God places those who believe in him. That narrow road that leads to that narrow door that opens into the mansions that God has prepared for us in heaven. You may know from experience that Driving on a narrow road can be treacherous. I'm thinking of the, the kind of a narrow road, so narrow that it almost feels like if you stick, stuck your arm out the, the driver's side window, you could practically touch the cars going by you in the other direction. One of those narrow roads, when you look out the passenger side window, all you see is a bright blue sky because just a, a couple of feet to your right, is the edge of a cliff and it's straight down. I mean, one little mistake, one moment of inattentive driving could spell disaster. But a road doesn't have to be that extreme to be treacherous, dangerous. We probably have all done it, would be my guess. We're driving down a fairly normal road 
and something off on the side catches our attention and we start to stare at it. And the longer we stare at it, the more we go off course. Till pretty soon we find ourselves either across the median or on the shoulder. This is the blessing of speed limit signs and road striping and rumble strips and those guardrails. They can keep us moving forward in our lane safely so that ultimately we reach our destination. And that's also the blessing of God's law for the believing child of God. It's like the speed limit sign, the road striping, the rumble strips, the guardrails. God's law can help to keep the Christian on course, moving forward along the path that God laid out for us. Let's keep those thoughts in mind as we listen again to the words of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life. And he will give you many years in the land he swore to give your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As we think about applying these words of Moses spoken to the Old Testament Israelites, to ourselves today as the New Testament people of God, it's always a good thing to remind ourselves that God never that God did not give his law to us so that we would know what to do in order to save ourselves. I'll always remember sitting in Bible class in one of the congregations I served and there was a, a dear man, I think a lifelong member of the local Lutheran congregation. He was an every Sunday attender. And in fact, I think at the time he was president of the congregation. And there was a question in Bible class that I don't remember the exact wording, but it boiled down to this, and how do we get to heaven? I was struck by his answer, this lifelong Lutheran, this every Sunday church and Bible class attender. He said, again, I don't remember his exact words, but it boiled down to, well, we do our best to do what's right to avoid the big sins. This notion that we can save ourselves, it's, it's stuck deep within us. And so we do well to remind ourselves often that God's law does not lay out for us how we can save ourselves, what, we, what we're going to do and not do so that when we appear before the judgment seat of God, He's happy with us. That we can say to God, uh, you have to let me in. I've done, I've done what you've asked me to do. No, quite the opposite. God's law is there to convince us that we haven't done what God requires of us. We hear in our text, for example, I command you today 
to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commands, decrees, and laws. Anyone who is being honest with him or herself after hearing words like that has to start ticking off an endless list of all the ways in which I have, in fact, not loved God, but chosen to love myself instead. The countless number of times in which I have, in fact, not walked in God's ways, but chose to follow the path of my own choosing. That endless list of times when I I didn't keep God's commands and laws, and I didn't just break them. <clears throat> I absolutely shattered them. I obliterated them by my disobedience. This is for the believing child of God, the blessing of God's law. It's the road striping, the rumble strips, the guardrails there along the side of the road to let us know, Christian, you veered off course. What you've done is wrong. You violated God's law, and if you keep going in that direction, it's going to mean utter disaster for you. You're going to run headlong into a semi coming in the other direction or you're going to find yourself driving off the edge of a cliff. It's a blessing of God's law. It, it wakes us up. It shakes us as it calls us to repentance, as it calls us to turn away from that sin that threatens to destroy us it calls us to turn away from death and destruction. It convinces us we can't save ourselves so that we then go running to our Savior, fall on our knees and say to Him, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Forgive me for the sake of Your perfect obedience to God's law. Forgive me for the sake of the payment that you made on the cross in my behalf. And then, having been forgiven, we return to that, that, that road that God has put us on as his believing children, a, a blessed road. And as the children of God, we know we know that the road, the path that God has laid down for us to follow through life, it is indeed a blessed road. Our sinful nature wants to look at God's commandments and say they take all the fun out of life. But as the redeemed children of God, we now know better. It's a blessed path God has laid out for us. It has to be because we know the God who laid that path out for us. This was the God who, who loved us in eternity, loved us even though he knew every last thing about us. This is the God who, though we came into this world with a seething hatred of him, chose to send his own son to suffer a horrific death, to reconcile us to him, this is the God who, of all the things that he could do in eternity, wants to spend his eternity with us. And so he's laid out for us this path through life to guide us safely, to keep us from veering off to the left or to the right, to guide us so that we reach our destination he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength. Use my name to, to pray and praise and give thanks. Gather regularly around my word. Honor, respect those whom I've put in positions of authority over you. Care for your own body and life and that of others. Lead a chaste and decent life. 
Be satisfied with what I've given you and help others to keep what I've given them. Do everything within your power to protect the good name of another. Our loving God says these things to us because he does not want to see sin trap us, entangle us, enslave us, and ultimately destroy us. How desperately he wants us to walk along that path he's laid for us through life. It's not just God, though, that wants us to walk along that path. That's something as we as the, as the redeemed children of God want as well. The scriptures say if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. Our baptism made us new in Christ. It gave us a new mind and a new heart. That new mind and that new heart have an ability and a desire we did not have before. Resist the devil, God tells us in the Scripture. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is the beauty of God's grace in our lives. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion and to leave self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present evil age. Let Moses encourage us today to fight the good fight of faith, to put on the full armor of God. And when Satan, sin, the world come to tempt us, to steer us off to the left or to the right, to take our stand. As Moses said to the Israelites, choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life. Amen. We hear the choir.
We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.